Good morning, y'all. Uh, today is going to be factoring quadratics when a equals 1. All right, so a quadratic, that's a polynomial. We've got one term with is squared, one term with just an x, and then another term with a constant. All right, so that's what a quadratic is going to be. And factoring, remember, what we're trying to do is we're going to get two sets of parentheses with some stuff inside each set that when we multiply them together, it's gonna give us what we started with. All right, that's gonna make a little more sense in a minute. So first of all, for general form, there should be an A right here. If you wanna go ahead and add the A, there should be an A in front of this X squared right there, okay? It's AX squared plus BX plus C. Where the A and the B, they both rep, A, B, and C, those all represent some number. Okay, those are just placeholder letters. It's going to be some number. Like, look at this. For, for instance, taking this first example down here, our A is equal to 1, right? Notice that there is no number being multiplied by the x squared. That's like that invisible 1 there that we've talked about. That's your A right here. Your A equals 1. And as far as today is concerned, everything we're going to do is with A equals 1. Um, these are, are the easier ones. Once A does not equal 1, it's a little bit more tricky. There's some more steps we've got to do. But don't worry about that yet. For now, A is going to equal 1. And then B, that's the number that is in front of just the X, the one in the middle guy right here. So this B in this example is 7. And then C is just the one that's hanging out at the end all by itself. So C equals 12 in this case. All right. So when we're factoring these, here's what the idea is going to be. We're going to look for two numbers that multiply to C. So in our example, we're multiplying to 12. Notice this little box right here. We are multiplying to this number on the end. We want two numbers that multiply to that guy. That's what this little dot's for. That means multiply, right? And then also, we want those same two numbers. They also need to add or subtract, and then you need to be able to combine them with addition or subtraction to get this number right here in the middle, to get B. All right, so here's what the idea is. This is generally, they call this the X method for factoring. So here's how we would do this first one. So we have our X. C goes down at the bottom. Remember, C is that constant. It's that number here at the end. It's this guy, the 12. All right, so we're going to have our 12 down here. B goes up at the top. That is the 7, right? As this guy right here. I'm going to go ahead and actually use orange because I used orange to point it out. Our B goes up at the top. So we're looking for two numbers. They need to multiply to 12 and add to 7. So the key is you want to think about first, think about what multiplies to 12 to narrow down our options and then see which of those combinations will add up and give us 7. All right? So we can think about what multiplies to 12. First of all, we've got 1 and 12. That does not add up to 7, right? 1 and 12 adds up to 13. Uh, we've got 2 and 6. But again, that doesn't add up to 7, right? That adds up to 8. And then the one other thing we can multiply together and get 12 is 3 and 4. And those do add up to 7. So those are the numbers that we're looking for. 3 and 4. It's supposed to be a 4. So our factors are x plus 3 and x plus 4. All right, so as far as a equals 1 is concerned, when we are factoring, it's going to be x plus or minus one of them multiplied by x plus or minus the other one. And again, the order doesn't matter, right? I could also write this as x plus 4 times x plus 3. The reason being is because when you're multiplying two things together, the order does not matter, right? 2 times 5 is 10, and 5 times 2 is also 10. So it doesn't matter which way we're multiplying them. We're going to get to the same answer either way. All right, let's do a few more examples here. All right, so this one. This is going to be on the next page of your notes. So we're looking at, remember, this is your B right here. That's your B, B equals 6. And then your C is that number all by itself is 5. All right, so we're wanting to multiply to 5. And we want to add up to 6. So think of all the things that multiply to 5. We've actually only got one option here. 1 times 5. And sure enough, that adds up to 6. All right. At this point, you might be thinking, all right, what if nothing works, right? Like, what if I try all the combinations to multiply and I can't get it to add up to the other one? For now, 
you don't need to worry about that. That's something that we're going to learn later on. As far as today's worksheets are concerned, that's not going to happen. So if you think that that's happened, what you need to do is go back and check everything. Make sure you're multiplying right. Make sure you're adding right. Right? Because for now, um, there's not going to be a scenario where you try everything that multiplies to five, but none of it adds up to six. That, 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 that's not going to happen today. All right. So we've got our two numbers, one and five. So our two factors are x plus one times x plus five. So that would be your answer. All right, we got a few more examples here. Let's power through them. All right, here, the next one. This is where negatives are introduced. So we have got a negative 18 right here. C, be mindful. That is a negative 18. All right, it's not a positive 18. That is a negative 18. Secondly, that B is going to be a 3. All right, so we've got B is 3, C is negative 18. So we've got to be mindful that we're multiplying to negative 18, adding to 3. All right, so here's what we've got. Think about everything that multiplies to negative 18. All right, we've got 1 times negative 18. We've got negative 1 times 18. Hey, I'm recording videos right now. Hey, can you close the door, please? All right. Sorry about that. Um, my cousins were about to shoot me with Nerf guns. All right. Um, okay, I lost my train of thought. Think of everything that multiplies to negative 18, right? Because we want to find out uh, what combination is going to add up to 3. All right. We've got 2 times negative 9. We've got negative 9 times 2. And we've got 3 times negative 6. And we've got negative 3 times 6. I also just realized the second one here, I wrote that wrong. That should be a negative two and a nine, right? Because I just rewritten the same thing. I wrote the last one. All right. So those are all of our combinations that can multiply and give us a negative 18. So the question is, which of these adds up to three? All right. So this is where we're going to get more practice with multiplying quickly, adding and subtracting really quick in your head. Because the quicker you get with that, these are going to become clockwork. You're going to be able to do these in no time at all. But for now, we're going to go through and figure out which of these adds up and gives us three, right? Because remember, we're wanting to add up to this guy right here, right? Because we're multiplying to negative 18. I forgot to write this in at the beginning, adding up to three. Okay. Anyway, so we can go through, add all of those up. What you're going to find out is that none of those add up to three except for this one right here, negative three and six. So those are the two numbers we find. And thus, the factors will be x minus 3 and x plus 6, right? Because negative 3 plus 6 does, in fact, add up to 3. It's what we wanted to do, right? Multiplies to negative 18, adds up to 3. There's your answer. All right, we got two more. So the next, time we, the next thing we're going to do, we are going to find two numbers. We want to multiply to 21. And this time we want to add to negative 10. All right. So we set up our box method. We're going to go, sorry, the X method. We're going to multiply to 21 and we are going to add to negative 10. All right. So think about everything that uh, multiplies to 21, right? But notice it needs to add to a negative. So think about what that tells us. That tells us both of these numbers have to be negative, right? Because think about it logically. If they're both positive, those are going to add up to a positive. So this isn't going to work. If one is positive and one is negative, when you multiply a positive and a negative, you get a negative. So that wouldn't multiply to 21, right? So the only way to multiply to a positive and add up to a negative, both of those numbers have got to be negative numbers. All right, do. Are we trying to multiply to a positive or a negative? And are we trying to add up to a positive or a negative? Right, because that's going to tell you a lot about the signs of the numbers. Again, the best way to get good at this is just practicing that logic, practicing multiplying, adding really fast. Um, and you're going to get a lot faster at this over time. Anyways, so let's think about, remember, both of these have to be negative, right? Because we're multiplying to a positive, but adding to a negative. So we've actually only got two options here, right? We've got negative 1 to 21 
and negative 3 times negative 7. Well, only one of those adds up and gives us negative 10, right? Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10, and negative 1 minus 21 would be negative 22. All right, so this is the one we're interested in, right? Because that those two numbers, they multiply together and give us 21, and they add together and give us negative 10. Negative 3, negative 7. So those are your factors, x minus 3 and x minus 7. All right, one more. All right, this time they're both negative. So what are we doing when they're both negative? Well, not much different. So we've got our c is negative 30. All right, we're going to multiply to negative 30. And let's see, what are we going to add to? We're going to add to negative 1, right? Remember, whenever there's no number in front of that x, that's an invisible 1 right there. That's not a 0, that's a 1. All right, so we got negative 1. Okay. So we want to multiply to a negative, right? If we're multiplying to a negative number, that tells us that one of these has got to be positive and the other one has got to be negative, right? Because two positives multiply to a positive, two negatives multiply to a positive. So to get this, right, we're multiplying to negative 30. One of these guys has got to be a positive, the other guy's got to be a negative. Awesome. All right, so let's think about everything that multiplies to negative 30. So we could have negative 2 times 15. We could have 2 times negative 15. Um, oh, I forgot 1 and 30, but 1 and 30, that doesn't add up to negative 1, right? That's going to be a much larger number, whether it's negative 30 plus 1 or 1 minus or uh, negative 1 plus 30, that's not going to add to negative 1. And then the one other thing that multiplies to negative 30, we have 5 times negative 6 and negative 5 times positive 6. So again, we've made a list of all the things that multiply and give us negative 30. Right? And we need to figure out which of these is going to add together to give us negative 1. And sure enough, if we go down the list, we will find that negative 5, oh sorry, 5 plus negative 6, or you could also say 5 minus 6, that does give you negative 1. Right? So there we are. So 5 and negative 6, those guys, they multiply to negative 30, and they add up to negative 1. Negative 5 plus, ne I keep saying negative 5, 5 plus negative 6 is negative one. All right, so again, write down your factors. So we've got a plus five and a minus six. And there you are. All right, the practice worksheet for today is gonna be very similar to that. So we've got a, our four different cases here, right? We've got both of them that's positive. You can look at that example. We've got the B is positive, but the C is negative. You got an example for that. If you have B is positive, but oops, sorry, B is negative, but C is positive, we've got an example there. And then our last example is when they are both negative. All right, so you've seen all the different possible cases now. Um, so go ahead, work through that worksheet. Again, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm available. I'm happy to help. I want to help. Um, but good luck.